Scroll up to the top of the of the schedule.
is going on around our nation and around our world, God is at work. He is our way maker. He is our miracle worker. Amen. Would you stand and let's sing together as we worship Him. And if you haven't found Him as your way maker, you got to lean on Him. Amen. What a fellowship. What a joy divine. On the everlasting arms. What a Yes, Mark did Mark, set, Mark set, set, up, set up, which was really good because I can't do those there things. There you go. But, so. but, you know, I was looking up here at, when it was time for us to start worship, and I said, where are all those people that were helping us yesterday? <laughs> but you came in. Most of you did, so that's good. Anyway, it was a good time, and uh, I, I do want to say again thank you to all of those who, who helped, uh, especially, uh, not especially, but, but Mark came early and helped me get set up, and uh, Ryan and Jeanette and Connie helped me uh, break everything down, and, and uh, so it all worked out wonderfully. And uh, well, I tell you what, if you didn't make your way over there, you missed it, obviously. The folks right beside us were selling AJ's Italian Ice. AJ's Italian Ice. Wow. And specialty popcorn. And specialty popcorn. Didn't get any of that, but I got some of that ice. Thank you, Netta. And uh, the folks next to them had a lemonade stand. The folks next to them were doing ribs and chicken on the grill. They were called Georgia's, Georgia's South Barbecue, I believe was their name. And um, 
Then there was a cinnamon bun place that Carrie found uh, right beside them. So it was just a lot of fun and uh, several vendors. So uh, uh, anyway, thanks again for all who, who made this happen. Appreciate it. Um, <clears throat> it's, it's uh, oh, I didn't make a video. That's supposed, I'm sorry. I mean, I did make a slide. It's supposed to say, what's it supposed to say? Truth for kids, but anyway. Uh, word to, to tell us all, but especially our children, a story. Thank you all for joining us online. Uh, we usually have uh, several children with us. And so I want to tell you a story. Uh, it's actually a, a, an old, old story. You may have even heard it. In, in fact, it's a story that Jesus told when he was walking the earth. And uh, it's the, the, basically the story is that uh, Jesus said that there were two builders and uh, one of the builders was a wise builder and he built his house on a rock foundation and when the storms came and the rains came the house stood steady because it was built on rock the second builder Jesus referred to as a foolish builder because he built on sand and when the rains came and the floods came, the house that was built on the sand disappeared. It was gone. Couldn't stand up to the storms. How many of you have ever been to the beach? I'm not a big beach person, really. Uh, Mark and I were talking about it yesterday. He and I have something in common. We like to stay under the umbrella. That's it. We're not getting out in the sun if we can help it. Uh, he said he does, uh, you know, every, every now and then he'll go out and, and take a dip in the ocean. Well, every now and then I'll go out to my knees in the ocean. <laughs> but I love standing right at the edge where the tide comes in a little bit and washes over my feet and ankles and then it goes back out and I just stand still and I feel the sand giving way beneath my feet. That's just the weirdest feeling. Uh, well, but that's what it's like, you know? Uh, it, when you build on sand. So there are three questions that, that I want to answer this morning. The first is, uh, what is the house? Well, in Jesus' story, the house represents a person's life. And so Jesus was saying the wise man built his life on rock and the foolish man built his life on sand. So the next obvious question is, what is rock? What did the wise man build his house on? Uh, the answer to that is Jesus Christ and His Word. Uh, God gave His Son, Jesus, to come and walk this earth. Therefore, everything Jesus did, everything He said, was the Word of God. And today we have Scripture, which is also the Word of God. And so that's the rock. We build our life on Jesus Christ and His Word. All right? The foolish man built his house on sand. So the third question, what is sand? Now, um, you want the easy answer? You want the simple answer? All right. If rock is Jesus Christ and his word, and that's all it is, then everything else is sand. And if you build your life on anything other than Christ and his word, you're building on sand. And so I just wanted to demonstrate that a little bit. Um, for example here, um, some people, when they get stressed, uh, maybe, maybe experiencing emotional pain, they turn to the bottle, they turn to liquor. And I want to tell you, you probably already know, but this is sand. In fact, it's not even good for you. It's, it's, it's not good for you physically, it's not good for you mentally, and it's certainly not good for you emotionally. So, uh, you know, some people do that. Um, well, here's another one similar to it. Uh, if they don't, or maybe even if they do, uh, some also turn to drugs. Not prescription drugs. Well, some even abuse prescription drugs. But, but really, you know, and these, these two uh, folks who are doing this, you know what? They're just trying to get away from the pain. They're trying to get away from the stress. And um, where's that other one I wanted to put right here? Because I, I just like this. And some people, when they're stressed or, or um, upset, life is over, 
They just go out and spend money. I mean, lots of money. And, and that kind of medicates the pain. They think that makes them feel better to do that. So, um, I don't know. I may need to do that one day. You think that's a pretty good looking car? No, no. no. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, so, you know what? That's all so saying. You go out just blowing money. All right? That's not going to help your stress level. It's going to hurt it eventually. Uh, some people, uh, you know, here's going to church. Now, that's a good thing. Y'all came to church this morning, and y'all are coming to church online. So that's a good thing. But you know what? Uh, if you're building your life, in other words, uh, if you're counting on getting into heaven because you came to church this morning, this is saying attending church is not going to help you get into heaven. Uh, well, it may help you, but that's not the way you get there, all right? Just going to church isn't the answer. Um, some people, they just do everything they can to get rich. They work uh, big hours. Y'all can't see that. That's a big C note right there, $100 bill. I carry them all the time. <laughs> Just like this. These paper ones. <laughs> <laughs> of course, money is also saying you can't buy your way into heaven. See, it's already time. Yeah, it's already time. Get back up there. All right. Oh, uh, let's see. Well, here's another bad habit that some people get into. This, again, is not healthy physically or emotionally. Uh, those are cigarettes. Y'all can't see them. Some of our folks are going, hmm. What did he say, Doris? Uh, <laughs> uh, but again, this is to relieve stress, right? People say, oh, 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 i, I got to have a cigarette. I'm nervous as I can be. Well, I think caffeine makes a lot of people nervous. So anyway, again, these are all saying. Why? Why do we say these are all saying? Because they're not the rock. They're not Jesus Christ. They're not his word. Some people think, you know, if I give enough money to the church, then I'll make it to heaven. No. Now, we need the money just like we need you coming to church. Uh, we need the offerings as well. God has commanded that. But that in itself won't get you to heaven. How about if you do, uh, if you help others, do kind deeds and you're friendly, that's a good thing, isn't it? Isn't it? All right. Give people a big smile. But that too, oh, yeah. That too, that's a wobbly thing, isn't it? How about witnessing? Is that a good thing to do? It is. Will telling other people about Jesus get you to heaven? No. It might get the other person to heaven, but it won't get you there. All right. I better put it up upwards. All right. And there's one more. How about reading the Bible? That's a good thing. And we said build your life on God's Word, which is true, but if you just think reading the Bible is going to get you to heaven, it's not. I mean, you can read the Bible all the way through every year for the rest of your life. It still won't get you to heaven because you're not really applying it to your life. You don't just read what it says, but you do what it says. That's how you build your life on Christ. And so, with that, we learn a song, and uh, I learned it as a kid, and you guys know it, I'm sure. It's a song about that story that Jesus told, and it goes like this. Sing it with me if you know it. The wise man built his house upon the rock. The wise man built his house upon the rock. The wise man built his house upon the rock, and the rains came a tumbling down. Stood firm. The rains came down and the floods came up. The rains came down and the floods came up. The rains came down and the floods came up, and the house on the rock stood firm. Y'all know the motions to this song? I'm doing them for you. <laughs> the foolish man built his house upon the sand. The foolish man built his house upon the sand. The foolish man built his house upon the sand. And the rain came tumbling and the And the rain came down and 
the floods came up. The rains came down and the floods came up. The rains came down and the floods came up. And the house on the sand went splash! And there you have it. So build your life on Jesus Christ. Amen. first happened. The minutes felt like hours. The hours felt like days. And the horror of what happened, one detail after another, could hardly be processed, much less understood. Then days turned into weeks, and weeks turned into years. Memorials were built. Wars were fought. Victims' names were read. Survivors tried to pick up the pieces over and over again. But no matter how much time has passed, we vow to hold these memories. We will never forget those who were taken from us. The world changes and shifts this way and that. But one thing stays constant. One thing is steady. God God weeps with us. God mourns with us. God bottles up our tears and records them in his book. He is closer to you than your own breath and remains the cornerstone of life. God is the solid ground holding us up as the world moves beneath us. It's as true today as it was on that day. Our God reigns. He reigns over principalities and powers. His dominion stretches beyond what our eyes can see. And when the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy, our God reigns. We will always remember. Most of you remember that morning 20 years ago, where you were, who you were with, what you were doing. I thought it was just kind of ironic. I was in the hospital waiting room when the ladies in our church was having surgery and it was a surgery that uh, she was told uh, she had about a 30 to 40% chance of making it off the table. It was a true, literally a life and death surgery. And I thought how ironic that is that while she's in a life and death situation, completely unconscious, a lot of other people are in a life and death situation and know exactly what's going on. And as we watched it unfold on the television, and she made it through her surgery by the way, she did well. Uh, but more than that day, I, I think I remember the, the next day. I remember when, when people turned to prayer and when people banded together, came together, put, out, put aside our, our little personal selfish differences and decided there's something more important here than whether or not I'm getting my way and getting my rights. And so it brought us together for a little while at least. And so as I reflect today and remember, I think about my drive on the way back from the hospital on September 11th, listening to the radio wishing I could be with somebody. I didn't know who or what or why. Uh, 
Connie was in school, the kids were in school. Um, but that's the first time I had ever heard the song in a New York minute. And they played that on the radio. And wow, what a powerful song. Um, but I also remember the next day. And that following Sunday, five days later, and, and how people realized that life is precious and that nothing should be taken for granted, not even our safety. And uh, I trust you understand that and you have embraced that truth yourself and that you are leaning on the everlasting arms of Jesus Christ, that you're building your life on him and him alone. And beyond that, I, uh, this is a unrelated, but we need to say Happy Grandparents Day. We do have to say Happy Grandparents Day. How many are grandparents here today? All right. How many are grandchildren here today? That's all of us, right? Isn't that all of us? All right. Um, but I just want to say a, a, a special... Hey, you're awesome to all the grandparents. Uh, sometimes we feel like uh, we're the fifth wheel. We feel like our, our kids have outgrown us and the last thing they want is to, to hear grandma and grandpa's advice about something. Uh, but you know what? Um, no matter how they might feel in a moment, uh, they love you from the very depths of their heart just because of who you are. And uh, once again, life is precious. Amen. And some of you, uh, Grandma and Grandpa, in fact, most of us here today, I guess, Grandma and Grandpa are no longer around. And um, we have days that we wish, oh, I, wouldn't it be great if we could go to Grandma and Grandpa's for lunch today after church? So, uh, but I, I bless you today in the name of Christ. And I give God thanks for you and the example and influence that you are on your children and especially on your grandchildren today. So we're going to say a prayer for you. Uh, we're going to say a prayer for our nation. Would you stand and let's sing this little chorus together. Mm -hmm. Come on, Fresh on me, fill me with your power, satisfy my need. Only you can make me whole, give me strength to make me grow. I'm the Holy Spirit, fall afresh. And Heavenly Father, we do thank you for your presence with us. Thank you that you are our Father and you will always be. There's never a moment that we turn and you're not there. Never a time when we can call on you and you don't answer. We honor you and worship you today. Lord, I thank you for our grandparents. I thank you personally for the privilege to be a grandparent that you have uh, allowed me and uh, my wife the opportunity to experience the joy of grandkids and to watch them grow and develop. And I pray that uh, for each of us with that privilege today that you would give us wisdom to know when to step in and, and when to stay back and uh, that you would give us, uh, Lord, patience uh, at, at times when it's needed, um, that you would use our example of living uh, to make a huge impact on our kids and our grandkids. And Father, I pray for our nation this weekend as we remember uh, 
the events of 20 years ago. I pray especially for the families who 20 years later will say it still hurts. And I pray your comfort and peace for those families today. I pray for our nation's leaders. Oh God, would you rain your wisdom down upon their minds and give them a perspective and an outlook of what is good, really good for this nation and the way that you have planned it and designed it. And I pray, God, that you would lead their hearts and that they would come to see your way. And I pray for uh, the divisions across our land and God that you would bring healing to us and I thank you for the privilege to be the church today and uh, Lord would you would you remind us that our mission uh, is all about you and that it is uh, it is immediate that it's something that we really can't put off we really can't wait uh, the world is hungry and thirsty for our loving God they may not know that but you are the only one who can feel our needs and we turn to you for that today I thank you for the privilege now to open your word and I ask Lord that you would bless it to our hearts and to our minds I pray in Jesus name Amen. You can be seated. Have you ever um, tried to make a list? Maybe if you could just think back to yesterday. All right? Y'all can remember that far back. Uh, and, and make a list of the good deeds, the good things that you remember doing. And then on the other side, maybe a list of the bad things or the, the negative things that you did, if there were any. Um, and, and usually, for, for most of us in this room at least, uh, the good deeds are going to far outweigh the bad, aren't they? And, and that's a wonderful thing. But you know what? No matter how long the list on the left is, or how short the list on the right is, we can never be good enough to deserve heaven. It's impossible, literally impossible, for a human being to be so good that he or she is worthy to enter the gates of heaven without the help of the Savior. Um, and, and so making this list, it really can be sobering. I've just given some examples there. Uh, looks like some of it got cut off. Oh, well, that's all right. Uh, you know what you did, and, and you know, I mean, God's given you a conscience, and you know the things that were good and the things that were not. But in terms of eternal destiny, in terms of entering heaven, it doesn't matter how long your good list is or how long your short your bad how short your bad list is. <clears throat> and it is important, it's even commanded in Scripture uh, that that we practice goodness, isn't it? That we practice righteousness, that we be kind to others, that we do unto others as we would desire that they would do to us. Um, but it's absolutely impossible to be good enough to earn eternal life. That's the point of the story that Jesus told in Matthew chapter 7. Verse 24 and uh, I believe 25 read like this. Therefore everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, the winds blew and beat against that house, yet it did not fall because it had its foundation on the rock. You know, we move through life and, and sometimes you feel like you're about to be in over your head, like Larry was last week. 
uh, uh, sometimes you feel, you just feel like life is beating against you. And you don't know how much longer you can stand up. But I tell you that if your life is built on Jesus Christ, you can weather any storm by His power and by His grace. And the, as we said uh, earlier, the house in this parable represents a person's life. And, and your life matters. Uh, and, and where you build it is important, not only now, but also for eternity's sake. So as we consider today uh, the, the scripture about, scriptures about towers, uh, I'd like for us to consider Genesis chapter 11. It's a story of the Tower of Babel. It's not a story, it's the record of the Tower of Babel. It is an occurrence in history. Uh, most everyone, uh, whether they are religious or not, or whether they are faith faith individuals or not, they have heard this story and they believe it is a part of history. Interestingly, chron and chronologically, Genesis chapter 10 chronologically follows chapter 11. So they're, they're backwards in Scripture. And, and I think the reason for that is so that, uh, that chapter 11 makes sense to the reader, having read chapter 10 first. Um, chapter 10 uh, is the record of the establishment of nations. Before the Tower of Babel, there was one people. Um, but based on Noah's three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, chapter 10 gives us the division of the world into separate nations. In chapter 11, the world spoke a single language. Likely, they were under the influence of a leader called Nimrod. And, and the people, we are told that the people got behind Nimrod and decided to build a city and a tower. Interesting, we really don't know how many people decided to do this. Probably it was not the entire population. It was probably Nimrod and some, some of his followers or people who respected him. But it, it most likely was not the entire world at that time. Not the whole people, all right? Uh, and, and that will become clear here in a moment. But they decided to build a city with a tower that reaches to the heavens so that they could make a name for themselves and not be scattered. And there's our hint. They were afraid they might be scattered. Why? Apparently there were some people who weren't for this city and this tower. There were some people who were in opposition to this whole idea. But in fear of being scattered, they wanted to make a name for themselves. And so I want to clear up, first of all, a couple of misconceptions about this famous story. Uh, the first is that the name was not given because the Lord confused the languages. We just assume we call it the Tower of Babel because people were just babbling. They couldn't understand each other. The Lord confused the languages. Um, that is not the case. It's the Tower of Babel, and it was the, the location of this city and its tower were in the area of Babylon. And that's where it got its name, most likely. Um, second, there's no real indication that they were building a high tower in an attempt to reach God. That's another assumption we make. It says that they were building a tower to heaven, the older translations read, the newer translations read, to the heavens. Um, the heavens was the sky, all right? The sun, the moon, the stars. These were the heavens, and those were heavenly bodies, right? You, you get that. And um, why was God concerned then? If they weren't trying to reach up to God, kind of like, you know, Satan told Adam and Eve, you'll be just like God if you eat this fruit. Uh, 
if they weren't really trying to reach God, why was God so concerned? Why didn't he oppose this power? For surely he did. And so I, I want us to look at that for a few minutes. <clears throat> First of all, I want us to consider the materials that the people use. It's recorded in chapter 11, Genesis 11. The people made bricks and used tar as their adhesive. I probably should have used tar over here. Maybe that would have worked better than using nothing at all. Um, have you ever owned a clay pot and, and handled one? Have you ever broken one? They break easily. And, and in fact, we go to 2 Corinthians chapter uh, 4. And Paul says that we are given this treasure, the treasure being Jesus Christ, in earthen vessels. And again, the, new, the newer translations read jars of clay. There's a, a contemporary Christian music group whose name is Jars of Clay. They go by that based on that scripture from Paul. And so what Paul, what Paul was saying is we're fragile. Jars of clay, you can't really count on those to be strong. And so these people were using clay. They took clay and baked it into bricks, and then they used tar to build their tower. Um, let me just remind us that God does not build with bricks and tar. In fact, Peter makes it clear that God builds with stone, 1 Peter chapter 2. Uh, as you come to him, the living stone, rejected by humans, but chosen by God and precious to him, you also, like living stones, are being built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. And so these materials that they were using were man-made. And as we've illustrated over here, you can't build your life on man's wisdom and man's resources. It will never stand up against the things that the world throws at you. The second was their method. It was a godless method. Um, the desire of these people was to live in a world of political unity and religious unity. Uh, the tower, which symbolizes reli their religion, uh, would be built to the heavens, to the, to the stars and the moon. John Phillips uh, noted this. He holds that they wanted a tower topped by the heavens. That is, by the signs of the zodiac. And stargazing and occultism, uh, those were features of religion in that day. And so they were building a tower that was topped with their gods. Okay? Um, so their method was, was weak. It was godless. It had nothing to do with God. And then there's the motive. They were to glorify humanity. Excuse me. They wanted to glorify humanity. And, and they wanted to bind men together in a permanent union. And to do that in defiance of God and His perfect will. Do you understand that continues today? That, that part of all of the uproar and upheaval around our world is a people who are, who are reaching for power to make the world one government. Have you heard that? Do you know that? And they want us to be under one money system. And that they, they want us to be governed by one government. And the problem with that is they're leaving God out of the equation. Theirs is a humanistic motive also. And, and here in, these, the, in, in the Tower of Babel, the, they're hungry for power, and they want to rule and control everything, the government, the education, the money, the people. And most importantly, they wanted to achieve this without God. Jesus declared, according to John's Gospel, that the world will hate you. This is what he meant right here. The world is, is everyone and everything that's opposed to God. And the target of their hatred is everyone and everything that is connected 
to God. So if you have a relationship with Jesus Christ, you are among or, or you are a target to be hated because of your connection with Jesus Christ. And you're hated by those who want a world without him. And so that really was their mistake. And I know you feel like sometimes that, that we are overpowered and have no control. But I want you to know that the powers of this world who are trying to build a world without God are making a huge mistake. That was their mistake then in Genesis 11. That is still their mistake. God has never, ever permitted a lasting social order in which he has been excluded. He never has. He never will. They believe that excluding God in their thinking actually got rid of him. And, and that's what led to their demise. They think if they can just silence God for a little bit or pretend he's not there. I just think, I get tickled when a, when a child, um, they think if they cover their eyes, you can't see them because they can't see you. you know, that's what I'm talking about. They think, you know, if I ignore God, he's not there. He doesn't exist. We're appalled at how our political leaders can be so ruthlessly anti-God. How they could possibly believe, for example, in, in condoning, promoting things of Scripture uh, that clearly deems them to be sin. How can our government fight for the rights to be sinful in our world? And we think... But, you know, this has been coming for a very, very long time. And 9-11 was, was just one of a long list of indicators of the direction our world has been headed over these decades. But I think recognizing it to be not only from other nations, becoming from other nations, but also becoming from within us, I think it became really clear to a lot of people in 2008. And we have been going downhill ever since. And here we are. And as one individual, you know, I have very little control over these trends of our nation and our government and our world. So I must focus on what I can control, right? And you as well. I can control my choices. Here's the thing, see, they can remove prayer from our schools and, and, and they can take the Bible out of our educational system and they can pass laws that contradict my beliefs and they can even shut the doors of the churches. But no one can still my heart. Nothing can separate you from the love of God. Oh, let them have the, the tangible things. Because those, the good and the bad, are not going to get you to heaven anyway. What gets you to heaven is your relationship with Jesus Christ, your heart relationship. And that's the choice you can make that nobody can take away. And so I can't control the things, the laws that are being passed. I, I really can't. My, the only little ounce of control I have in that is casting a vote when there are political elections. And it's just one vote, we say. You put that one vote with a lot of others and hopefully we can make a difference if the elections are fair. <laughs> and true. See, that's not a lot of power, just being able to go to a poll and cast a vote. I should do it. You should do it. Vote for what you believe. But the only real power we have is to decide who we are and whose 
we are. And God has given you this life to make your choice. Will you build your life on sand or rock? Jesus Christ and His Word, this is the rock. Everything else, your goodness, your bad deeds, everything else is sand as far as your eternal destiny is concerned. One more bit of news, bit of truth for you. Those of you who are like me, I'm a, I'm a middle of the road, you know. That's why so many times when somebody asks my opinion about someone, I say, I don't care. Where are you going to eat? I don't care. I'm a middle of the road guy. I don't want to make any, you know, I don't want to choose sides. I don't want to make either side mad at me. You know, I don't like, so I'm a middle of the road guy. But in this, rock or sand, there's no middle road. You can't straddle the two. It's a choice. If you build partly on rock and partly on sand, when the rains of your life come and the storms of your life come, the house is going to slide over to the sandy side and collapse. There's no middle ground, and, and you can't just halfway commit to following God. Either you side with God or you side with the world. And the way of God is a narrow road, Scripture tells us. It says not a lot of folks are going that way. Today we see that. We understand what the Bible was talking about. You know, back in the, in the 60s, we thought, the 50s and 60s, back when church was everything, and everybody seemed like went to church, we thought we were on, the, on Broad Street, you know. Everybody was on this road. Uh, now... Culture has changed, society has changed, and we see how narrow it is. But I want to tell you this, it's the only way. The road of God is the only way to heaven. So, how will you choose? I love it when, when the Lord makes it just so simple. You to build on rock, you build on sand. There it is. I used to uh, like to use an illustration uh, back in the day. It's not quite so true anymore. Uh, but, but back when I was a young adult and a teenager, you know, you go to McDonald's or Burger King or to Crystal, woo -hoo, and uh, you look on this. They had this menu, huge menu behind the counter. You remember? They still do, but. Uh, back then, it was just a, the menu, did, pictures didn't change and all that. Uh, and you had this big menu of all these choices. And, and I get tickled at people, they just look and look and look. I'm thinking, hamburger or chicken? I mean, it's not a tough choice here. That's all they offer. You get a hamburger or you get chicken. So I don't know why it's taking you 10 minutes to decide. <laughs> well, now they give you... Two or three other choices, but you know what? It's it's not a it's not rocket science, folks. It's either the rock or sand. It's either Jesus Christ or the world. Where are you building your life? It will make all the difference in the world when your world begins to crumble. Heavenly Father, I recognize you today as the God of all creation. And while I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that you could snap your fingers and wipe away all the evil in this world, that's not your plan. You desire that we choose the direction we want to go, and you've given us this life to make that choice. And God, I pray today, if there's anyone in this room or in the sound of my voice, uh, across uh, cyberspace that that is fuzzy on their choice or they're, they're still just kind of halfway in and halfway out. God, I pray today that you convict their heart and help them to realize that there is only one way and that's to build our life on Jesus Christ so that when the rest of our world crumbles, 
we will be overcomers through the power of our Savior. Give us hearts of faith, hearts of conviction, and hearts of determination to follow you no matter what. I pray in Christ's name. Uh, we're going to have one last song here. Before we start it, uh, we're going to uh, bid our online worshipers a wonderful day. Thank you guys for being with us. Uh, the song that we are uh, going to hear, you can find on YouTube. Uh, it's by Pat Barrett, I believe, um, and it's called Build Your Life. And so uh, once you sign off, uh, take a look at it on YouTube. All right? God bless you.